Hi, I'm Pauline and I'm a painter. Instead of painting on a canvas though, I actually work digitally on my computer using a tablet and my stylus. Today I'm here to teach you about power. You know, they say that the pen is mightier than the sword because words have power, but if a picture is worth a thousand words, then it's a thousand times more powerful. You might be wondering why a painter is teaching you about power. Well, since I paint, I have a lot of power in my pictures. There are many sources of power. Take personal power, for example. Here we have the class president. They exemplify personal power because their power comes from having a charismatic personality. By having this charisma, they can get people to vote for them, therefore making them a source of personal power. Next to the class president, we have their best friend. They are the source of associational power because they're friends with people who have power. On the other side of the class president is their annoying little brother, who is a source of nuisance power. You know, because of their ability to annoy everyone, like tapping incessantly on your shoulder or repeating your every single word. I'm pretty sure you all have experiences with younger siblings, so you totally get the point. Changing what is served in the cafeteria from unhealthy food to healthy food is difficult because it requires changing the system of operations. This power is called habitual power because it comes from the status quo. The lunch lady is a representative of this type of power because she's a part of the system that maintains the social norm. Next to the lunch lady is a school nurse. The school nurse is a source of expert or information power because they have extensive knowledge about illnesses and emotional problems that students may face. Here, we have the school board. The school board is a prime source of procedural power because they control the decision-making processes for the school. The superintendent is a source of resource power because they have, you know, control of valuable things and such as money or supplies or even materials. This person represents the Parent Teacher Association or the PTA. The PTA is a source of moral power, which comes from appealing to the people's values. They advocate for what's best for the children that the school system is serving. Here we have the assistant principal, who is a source of sanction power. Sanction power comes from having the ability to keep others from meeting their needs, which an assistant principal can do through disciplining students by, you know, giving them detentions or suspensions and stuff. Last but not least, we have the principal. The principal holds formal authority, which is a power that comes from someone's position. So now you know the 10 sources of power, I hope you can identify power in your lives. But speaking of power, I think I'm almost out of...